Hey, it's Mark here, and today I wanted to look into how long it would take for the average American household to save $100,000 and then see how that compares to other ways to generate $100,000 worth of equity or value. All right, so in this case, I'm taking all of this data from where is it? The Bureau of Labor Statistics. This is their Consumer Expenditures 2011 Economic News Release. They also have a lot of variety of other useful information. But for here, we're looking at average annual expenditures and characteristics of all consumer units and percent changes 2009 to 2011. So this is looking at the whole population. There's 122,287, not thousand, but actually million consumer units. And with uh, average amount of persons in each unit is 2.5. That would get you to the uh, total population of the United States, which should be around 300,000. Let me just verify. Yeah, so 305 million, because those numbers are in thousands. So what I've done here is I've taken this data, number of consumer units for 2011, 122,000, average age of the reference persons, 49 years, uh, 2.5 people per unit percent homeowner 65 percent and then down here they have the income before taxes which I have right here income before taxes and what you have to cons remember is that with all these expenditures that they list down here you have to pay for these with your after-tax dollars so it's kind of misleading to have this income before taxes without actually showing what the income after taxes would be so what I went ahead is I looked at the different tax rates and I got this data from this website here taxes.about.com and this was for 2011 so what I went ahead and did was they have different tax brackets 10 percent on the income between the zero to eight thousand five hundred so to figure out how much you're going to pay on sixty three thousand six hundred eighty five dollars of the four tax income you're going to do 850, which is 10% of the 8,500 for that first part. You're going to do 15% of the uh, 8,500 difference between 8,500 and 34,500 in this bracket, what you're paying on. And then after that, because 63,000 is below 83,600, you're going to pay 25% on that. So you get to $9,729. All right. This over here is just showing what the monthly number is. And I will put all of this into the comment section below so you can check it in your own time. So now I've copied all of the annual average expenditures. And I did this as a percent of the after tax income. So with food, 11.8%, housing is 31%, apparel, 3%, transportation. The big, the big items here are housing, transportation, food and then insurance. And what I did from this is I got to the total expenditures, 48,975. And then figured out how much after tax dollars do we have left, which would be, my assumption is that this would go towards savings. So there's $4,981, which comes out to 9.2% of your income after taxes that you would put to savings. So, and if we were to look at that in terms of what percentage it is of our before tax dollars, then it would come to 7.8%. All right, so now that you've got that, you want target savings of $100,000. So the time to target is just going to be $100,000 divided by the amount we save each year. So it comes out to about 20 years. So 20 years. 20 years to save a hundred thousand dollars wow uh, the other option that you could do is let's say you buy an investment property at a cap rate of 10 percent uh, and you can sell it at a cap rate of 10 percent so you've bought some investment property and what you're able to do is increase the income in some way maybe you raise the rents maybe you figure out that you can find a better tenant who will pay more rent. Uh, maybe you can add on an addition that will increase the revenues. 
Maybe you add a laundry room to increase revenue. Maybe you add a billboard to increase revenue. Uh, you have some kind of advertising program. There's a whole bunch of different ways that you can maximize the revenue of an investment property. So with a cap rate of 10%, you would have to increase the uh, NOI, which is known as the net operating income, by 100,000 times 10%. So you increase it by $10,000 a year. That is $833 a month. So how can you increase the revenue for an investment property by just $833 per month? And by doing that, you will have created, for a property with a cap rate of 10%, $100,000 worth of value. So there's two options that people have. You can try to save $200,000, which is a long, tedious process, it takes 20 years. Or you can think creatively about how you could increase the value of an investment property by increasing the net operating income of it. Now this doesn't just apply for investment properties, it applies for any kind of business. If you're able to increase the revenue of a business, each business says they have their own kind of cap rate. What if it's a restaurant? It could be some internet website that's generating a business. It could be a YouTube channel, right? There's all these different ways to create income and uh, just by knowing what your cap rate is and, and what your target is, you can figure out how much you need to increase your net operating income by. So I hope this video was insightful and that you got a really key understanding that I've uh, gone to myself about uh, ways of creating wealth in America today.